Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and welcome to part 21 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. So in this video, we're going to start moving our vehicle by programming in its acceleration. But first, we have to do a little bit of housekeeping. I realized as I was planning this video that we can look at our vehicle character, and we, while we have our vehicle controller script on it, we don't actually have the rigid body or the collider that go with it. This is a little bit weird because in our script, we are actually requiring those components be attached, but for some reason they're not appearing here. And I think what happened was when we had added this script, it didn't have those requirements. Um, it wasn't inheriting from the collider. Um, sorry, it wasn't inheriting from the controller base class. So we were able to attach it without any of those prereqs, and now it's just kind of grandfathered into that. So in order to fix that, what we can do is we can just right click here and remove this component. Now there is going to be a little bit of a gotcha here. If I were to just click add component and try to re-add this vehicle controller, you'll see that it gives us invalid operation. We have to add a required component of one of these several types. Now this usually doesn't happen. If you have a required component and you just go to add it, um, or go to add the component that requires these components, it should just add them automatically for you. However, the thing is you'll notice here is that we have a mesh collider, a box collider, a sphere collider, or a capsule collider, uh, all these different types of colliders. And the reason that those are there is because we all we're requiring is some kind of collider. It doesn't matter what kind, it just has to be a collider. So Unity can't make that decision for us. So what we do have to do here is we have to go in here, we have to quickly add our box collider, add that in here, and now we can actually start typing vehicle, add in our vehicle controller, and it will add the rigid body for us because there's only one type of rigid body. But so yeah, we just wanna make sure we have our box collider and our rigid body on here. Now we also have to be careful because we have in our vehicle model we actually have another box collider and we don't need both we don't want both in fact they that could lead to some weird um, collisions happening that we don't want to happen so how we can fix this is you'll remember that our vehicle model is really just a cube and it's you know kind of repositioned at uh, y.25 and it's scaled at 1.5.5 .5 and 2.5 make note of those um, particular um, stats here in the transform, we're actually going to convert those. If I zoom in here on our uh, vehicle, you can see that there's sort of this second collider that's sticking out of the bottom. That's the one that we have on our vehicle character. So we're going to take those same stats that we had on our vehicle model and apply them directly to our box collider. So on the Y it's going to go up to 0.25 x is going to be 1.5, y is only going to be 0.5, and z will be 2.5. And you see that that now matches that previous box perfectly. So we'll make sure that's all in there. Now we can go back to our vehicle model, and we can actually just remove this box collider component. We no longer need that. It'll all be handled through the box collider on our vehicle character. Final thing we're going to do on our vehicle character is in the rigid body, we're going to get rid of the angular drag. We don't need that, so we're going to make that down to zero. And we're going to freeze our rotation on the x and the z uh, axes. We're going to keep the y open because that's what's going to let us steer. As you see here, the y is the one that's kind of um, pointing straight up. So it's kind of like, you know, almost like a dowel that we can rotate on as we steer left and right. But we're not going to do any flips or be going up any ramps right now, so we're going to freeze that X and that Z rotation, so we're always going to be flat on the ground. Now with that, we can actually start moving our vehicle. Quickly save our scene. And so, when we were moving our walking controller, it was a very kind of basic system where when we were walking, we were either walking at our constant speed, which I believe was Six. Let's see here. If I go into our player prefab, we can see it down here. Or sorry, three. Our walk speed was three. So we're either walking at a speed of three or we're not walking at all. So it's either three or zero. Even if we had had a joystick though, and like we're you know be able to kind of nudge the joystick, you know, just to say halfway instead of full, we'd always be kind of instantly going to the speed that we were walking. So if we nudged it halfway, we'd instantly be walking 1.5, and if we let go, we'd instantly be going back to zero. It's this really we were going for that crisp control. 
which works really well for when you're having a character that's walking around. For a car, though, or some kind of vehicle, it really makes sense for it to actually kind of accelerate up to its proper speed or decelerate down. And so we're going to want to apply that to this uh, particular vehicle controller. We're going to want it to be the sort of system where when you start... Um, when you start accelerating your vehicle, you don't go immediately to top speed. You have to kind of ramp up to it. And so in order to do that, we have to kind of understand how acceleration works a little bit. As you may recall from math class or physics class, acceleration is equal to a current velocity minus the original velocity and all of that over the amount of time that's been um, spent accelerating. So using all of these variables we can actually kind of figure out what our acceleration rate is going to be right now we're just going to do a constant acceleration rate we're not going to worry about you know having to build up from friction or you know kind of struggling to reach the absolute top speed we're just going to kind of go linearly from zero to our maximum speed and so with that information we can actually figure out what our acceleration rate should be pretty easily we know that our velocity is going to ultimately be our max speed we know that our starting speed is always going to be zero, and then we can say that our time is really just the time from going to zero to our max speed. So sort of like if you see in a car commercial, they say zero to 60 in 2.3 seconds, that's exactly what we're doing here. That's our max speed, that's our starting from zero, and that's the 2.6 seconds or whatever. So knowing that our initial speed or initial velocity is always going to be zero, we can kind of take that out of the equation. Subtracting zero from something just is the same thing. So really all we're looking at here is our max speed over the time to get there is going to be our acceleration. And so we can use those exact stats. We can create a variable inside of our vehicle controller, a variable for our max speed that we can set, a variable for how long we want it to take it to get there, and then we can have a method figure out what our acceleration rate should be on any given frame that we're accelerating. So with all that information in hand, let's jump over to MonoDevelop and start programming our vehicle controller for acceleration. So here in MonoDevelop, we have our vehicle controller script. And we have already started building out a little bit here. We've got our read input uh, override method. And right now we're just kind of saying if we press the accelerator button, we just kind of debug log that we would be accelerating the vehicle here. We can actually delete that line. We're not going to need it anymore because we're actually going to start moving our vehicle. So we're going to need those variables that we talked about just a minute ago. So we'll say public float. And the first one's going to be called max speed. And let's set that equal to, we'll say 6F for now. We'll do double what our walking speed was. You know, give us some reason to get into the vehicle, move a little bit faster. And then we're going to create a public float time 0 to max. And that will set equal to, we'll say 2.5F for now. Obviously, we can, you know, adjust these as we want to. Um, that's why we're making them public, but we'll start with those two and see how they go. Next, we're going to create a private float called accelerate per second, and that is what that acceleration is. Because um, because we're dividing the max speed by the time it takes to get to that max speed, uh, it basically is the equivalent of saying what's the difference in velocity per second. So that's the accelerate per second. And then finally, we're going to have a float called forward velocity. And that's really going to be kind of like our vehicle speedometer. It's going to be in charge of keeping track of where our velocity currently is. Is it less than the max speed? Is it at zero? Or is it somewhere in between? And that's going to really inform what happens when we're holding down the acceleration key. Should we continue accelerating or just maintain a speed? Things like that. So first thing we can do is we're going to create a void awake method and in here we are going to calculate what that accelerate per second is and this is pretty easy we'll just say accelerate per second equals max speed divided by time zero to max it's a pretty simple uh, piece of math but division is always a little bit more expensive so if you can only do it only have to do it once and then store it in a um, in a variable it's always a good idea to do the other thing I'm going to do and this isn't entirely necessary but 
just in case is I'm going to make sure that our forward velocity is set to zero so that our um, vehicle isn't kind of drifting when it first appears just in case now from here we can go into our read input um, method and we're registering which buttons are being hit so right now we just care about the acceleration button our first main button the space bar and we're checking is it true that it is being pressed it doesn't matter if it's being pressed for the first frame or if it's being held for 10 minutes we know that it's being pressed to this particular frame and what we're going to do here is we are going to say if it is being pressed then we want to at least attempt to increase our velocity so we're going to say forward velocity plus equals adding to the number we're going to add our accelerate per second and we're going to multiply that by time dot delta time because we only want to add it by the frame length not a full second every frame otherwise that would um, grow exponentially quickly um, or not exponentially but far quicker far more quickly than we would want now the other thing we want to do here though is make sure that we're not ex oh, we're not exceeding the maximum speed because that's the reason we have a maximum speed so we can just quickly also check and say forward velocity equals mathf dot minimum it's always a little bit um, counterintuitive to me so make sure you're doing the minimum because you want the minimum of the forward velocity or max speed whichever one is lower so that we're kind of limiting it to the max speed lastly outside of this if statement I am going to quickly put in a new input equals true and um, remember that in our controller that we inherit from we have this protected bool new input which lets our late update function know that it should be doing something that there's some new input coming in because they are two separate methods that don't necessarily communicate otherwise speaking of which now we can actually go to our late update so let's create it we'll say late update returns void and all we have to say in here is that we want our rigid body and again this is something that in our controller we have access to the rigid body so rb dot velocity equals and this is a little bit tricky too in that we're gonna be we want our vehicle now to move forward at the rate of whatever our forward velocity is if our car though is how do we get forward on the car it was easy when we were doing the walking controller because up was always up down was always down now with our car we know we're going to eventually be steering so forward isn't necessarily forward in the z direction so if we were to just put vector 3 dot forward we would always move kind of toward the quote unquote north if you will toward the positive on the z axis even if we are turned and facing you know the opposite direction or to the left we'd you know suddenly be kind of sliding to the right and wouldn't really make sense for the vehicle so vector 3 dot forward is not going to work here what we can use however is called transform dot forward which takes a look at our actual um, game objects transform sees what direction it's pointing what its rotation currently is and then gets that it's you know kind of local forward position and then converts it to the global um, whatever that global vector is for us and the nice thing is it what's called normalizes that vector which means that we don't have to worry about it like altering the speed in any way it's only going to alter the direction to be what is always forward for the car so we'll use transform dot forward and we will multiply that by our forward velocity and with those two things in place we can now oh and lastly I'm going to quickly say new input equals false you will notice that I'm not actually checking for new input up here and the reason for that is that right now it's not going to matter as much um, it's gonna because again we're working a little bit differently once we get into deceleration that's gonna we're gonna start adding that in because it's gonna become more of a factor so right now we can go back over to unity 
we see that our vehicle controller is working we don't have any errors so we can hit play and we should see that we don't move it at first but now if I hit the spacebar we'll start to slowly ramp up in speed and we are not doing anything because something is not set to an instance of an object that's always sad so let's stop this Take a look, let's see here, rb.velocity equals transform times forward velocity. Hmm. Rb, we're getting our rigid body and our collider in the awake. Oh, I overrode the awake function, and that means that we're no longer getting the... Uh, getting the um, rigid body or the collider. So we can, we'll, 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 we'll just make this the start function. This is gonna be a little bit of a hack solve for right now um, because technically speaking, we should probably make this a virtual, um, virtual method and then override it here and just kind of use the base. But for now, we'll just make that a start method because it, it's just some data doesn't affect things too dramatically and now we can do this again I'll stop it clear it hit play now what we should be able to do hit our space bar and we are still not input data is not oh uh, and I think I know why that one is and that is because we never actually in inserted this controller into our input manager so make, make sure that you click and drag your vehicle character over to the controller. So now the input manager knows what it should be telling, what controller it should be telling to do its job. Save one last time, hit play, and now we can slowly start to accelerate and we'll kind of hit a wall there, which is not the best ever, but here we'll restart it again. Maybe we'll get a little bit I'm going to restart it a few times. There we go. Now we can hit spacebar, and now we start to start to drive. Now this max speed isn't the best ever. Could be more interesting. So we can certainly, but that's the nice thing is now we have our vehicle character. We can just up that max speed if we want. Maybe we'll do something like 12, or whoa, not 125, something like 12 there. Get a lot more acceleration out of this. So now we hit it we can see that we go start going pretty fast pretty quickly now obviously we are just kind of hitting objects right now and the other problem that we have right now is that I can accelerate but I can't slow down I'm gonna hit this block and there's nothing I can do about it um, and even if I let go of the key it continue accelerating at that you can even see now the car is still trying to move forward against this block because it's just still accelerating at that particular speed it just can't go anywhere right now so what we need to do is give our car a couple of ways actually to slow down one will be a braking system which will you know kind of actively and very quickly slow the vehicle down the other is going to be a deceleration system which is going to look and say hey if you're not pressing down the accelerator I'm gonna start slowing down it might take a little while but eventually it should roll to a stop so we're going to look at both of those methods of deceleration in our next video. So, um, be pretty quick because it's going to be a lot like acceleration just in reverse. But um, I figure this one's gone on long enough, so we will break this one off here, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.